When the report was published, the government assigned these jobs to the NFDC. When we asked why are you doing so, they told us that NFDC is equipped to do this kind of fiction film or the long film or the feature film. And the short film is the, whatever they are doing it is as a kind of flip service because of some just to tackle some criticism they have to show. Otherwise, heart of hearts, I don't think they have any love for short films being shown in Doordarshan. That is my personal view. We have been making these very artificial distinctions between art films versus, you know, commercial films. There is good cinema and there is bad cinema. So I could be working in feature films, uh, non-feature films, I could make feature length films. It doesn't matter. But the point that I was trying to make is the crisis precipitated by the coming of video which will separate the men from children. You know, the poets from the, uh, those who can use video just to document something that is happening in, in the most, un uh, in whatever fashion they want to document. I, I'm not commenting upon that. But those who are working with images, that is my main point. That's a different kind of precipitation of a crisis that I'm speaking about. Highlight the problems, and you could tell us about the selection of the film. Yeah? Yeah. Everybody here says that the package this film festival is something India at least has never seen before. What do you think? I think it's an improved program from the one that was shown in, in Calcutta a few years ago. And I think that's due to the fact that uh, Malti Sahi has done a very good job at short notice. There are problems in bringing films to India because they're worried about the prints being damaged in some way by uh, uh, elderly Indian projections sometimes. Uh, they're also worried about the fact that they can't sell the films in, in India, uh, at least not for very much money. So there being so many other festivals in the world, it's very, very very difficult for them. Uh, they tend to choose other festivals to come to. So every good film that you get here is despite an awful lot of opposition. Sometimes the sales agents say, no, we don't really want to go to India, there's nothing we can sell there. We'd rather go to Cannes or Berlin or Moscow or somewhere where there's a better chance of selling. So any festival here labors under a lot of disadvantages and that's why it's, uh, one should praise the package this year. Of course, the foreign delegates come to see the new Indian films more than the uh, international films, and uh, we're very pleased to see that uh, the quality here, too, has gone up this year as well. Yes, uh, the one that I personally like best is Adol Gopalakrishnan's film, uh, The Servile, that's the English title. I think uh, he's a major filmmaker. He's probably India's major filmmaker now. I think it's a film which some Westerners may find too slow, some Westerners may disagree with, but at the same time a lot of other Westerners will, will find it a very fine film, and I hope that Indians do too. I think there's a terrible problem in India for the parallel filmmakers. They can make their films, but can they show their films? And they can show them at festivals and at special events up and down the country, but they, they feel paralyzed because it's very difficult to show them in the cinemas. That happens in every nation, particularly uh, in Britain, and all over Europe it's the same problem. Hollywood is, uh, Hollywood or Bollywood, if you like, are taking all the seats in the cinemas, so it's very difficult. That's why the festival is so important. It does give people a chance to see the best of the rest of the world's films, and it gives the foreign delegates a chance to see the best of the Indian films. And I think Indian festivals do a very good job, despite the fact that they are run by a bureaucracy, and bureaucracies are not always the best way to run film festivals. I rather wish it was taken out of the government's hands altogether and the festival became a private operation run by someone who loved films and was given a grant by the government and the government left it alone. Uh, until that happens, I won't be entirely satisfied, but let's be pleased that the Calcutta Festival is good this year and that there are many people going to it and that Indians do have a chance at long last to see the best of foreign product. Well, the organization of any Indian film towns and the bureaucracy is in Delhi. 
they have to plonk the bureaucrats down on Calcutta or on Bangalore or on Trivandrum or on Madras and uh, the local people sometimes resent that kind of thing. So it's always very difficult to organize and sometimes things go badly wrong. Uh, one of the things that have gone wrong this year, I think, is the fact that the short films are being shown in one cinema at the precise time that the uh, Indian features are being shown at another. So foreign delegates have to choose whether they see the short films or the features. And naturally, they choose the features. So it's bad luck on the short filmmakers. But all festivals, you know, uh, have rumpuses, quarrels, uh, difficulties. There isn't a festival in the world where there isn't a great deal of politics and a great deal of... Uh, upset as well as happiness. So uh, one can't expect perfection, but I think the festival must continue to develop. And I would like to see the festival organizer allowed to travel a bit more. Because if he or she can travel, they can make contacts uh, and they can persuade more people to come here and they can also choose the films for themselves. And that would be a great advantage. I do think the fact that they can't travel uh, too much because they aren't given the money to go to Cannes and to Venice and to Moscow or to London is a very grave disadvantage in, in building a festival. So that's what I, I really would like to see a bit more travel money for the person who's organizing the festival. Uh, it's very difficult to see any wonderful development in the Indian cinema because, you know, if it's more and more difficult to get your good films into the cinema, directors lose hope and they lose purpose and they actually begin to make less sure films. Uh, as light follows day, the confidence, their confidence evaporates if they know they can't show their films in the cinemas where they really would like to. So I don't think there's been a lot of progress. For instance, the Chinese cinema has progressed much faster than the Indian cinema uh, because they put more money into it, because the prints are better, because they go to foreign festivals and they make a big fuss at those foreign festivals, whereas the Indian cinema seems to have taken a back seat to the rest of Asia. I think the Indian cinema could have led Asia uh, and I think it's a great pity that it hasn't. But I think we are in a bad situation in India here. I think a lot of the young filmmakers are losing confidence and they're still making some good films, but unless um, they get more widely abroad, unless more people come, more foreign delegates come to the festival, I think uh, it'll be a very difficult position for them. And first and foremost, if you give money for the making of a film, you must also give money for the distribution of that film. What is the point of making a film that's not shown? Uh, that is the real crux of the matter, why the Indian directors are losing confidence in themselves. Because if you do make a good film, it's liked abroad more than it is in India, which is completely absurd. Este, el sueño de conocer al menos una parte de la India. I'm able to, of, of no, getting to know at least one small part of India. Es también una gran atracción, no solamente por su cultura, sino por los films de Rai y de Zen, de estos maestros del cine hindú que conocía desde hace muchos años and uh, a country that I have known to some extent through its cinema, through the, especially throughout the great, to the masters, to the drive, and also to Minaj Shun. And this I had known, I have known India through its cinema many years back. Otra... También me interesaba mucho conocer el, eh, otras manifestaciones del cine de la India, que es un país, que es el primer país productor de películas y que ha sabido defender su espacio cinematográfico. Um, I have also been, I'm also very keen on knowing the different, uh, the other facets of Indian cinema. After all, you know, it is the biggest film producing country in the world. Mm. Yeah. At, least, yeah. at least it is a, here is a country which knows how to defend its own film territory. Also
hoy en día en todos los países de la Tierra se plantea más o menos el mismo problema de defender el espacio cinematográfico y cultural. Una sola mirada, un solo cine, el cine de Hollywood. En países que tenían una cinematografía muy fuerte, los países de Europa que tenían una cinematografía muy fuerte, hoy la están perdiendo. Countries that have had a strong film culture, a strong film presence, are actually now at this moment losing their hold over their own cinema. Por ejemplo, hace algunas, algunos años, algunas décadas, Italia, España o Alemania o Francia tenían la mayoría de su mercado para el cine nacional. Just a decade or two decades back, Spain, Italy or Germany had its own, uh, most of its cinema halls were running its own cinema. The dominant cinema was its own cinema. Hoy el cine de Hollywood And today this American cinema tiene el 95% del mercado en Alemania. American cinema holds 95% of the market, of the film market in Germany. Y el 90% de atraso y de barbarie, 15 familias en América Latina son las que deciden sobre toda la cultura, el cine. Well, I didn't have much uh, expectation in the beginning, but then when I arrived when I, and I, when I saw the program, uh, I found that there have been um, a lot of good films and uh, uh, many outstanding filmmakers whose works are being featured in this festival. I think it has been quite surprising and pleasant surprise, of course. Um, because uh, the preparations for the festival, I think, started a bit late. But then it is to the credit of the festival directorate that they have been able to uh, attract these films to our festival this time. Despite there have been um, kind of um, uh, a lot of talk about our festival going without good films and all that. So I think it has been a pleasant surprise and uh, it has been good. Sorry. Okay. Uh, which film have you seen and liked the most so far? Now, I've just started seeing the films. I was not here on the first day or, or even the second. Um, I particularly like the film I just saw now uh, from um, Portugal, Portuguese-French uh, uh, cooperation by Oliveira. The film um, based on Madame Bovary, and it is titled The Valley of the Ab Abraham. Uh, and then there was this Chinese film, uh, this, this sto The Strange Story of uh, Okiu. Uh, what Indian films have you seen? Are you looking forward to see? <laughs> I have not seen uh, many Indian films because uh, they, I can catch up with those films later. I do not want to miss the films from abroad. This is a rare opportunity. So I try to see as many films from abroad as possible. And what are your plans after your, this current film and this controversial one Vidyan? What are your next plans? Controversy about what? Slight controversy about Vidyan, I think. No, there's no controversy. There is no controversy. Okay, all the controversies apart, what is your next project? But next project, no, I have not started thinking about it. Uh, it's too early. Uh, it takes some time before I decide on the next project. And finally, you've been to uh, festivals in, Cal in Calcutta and yeah. elsewhere in the country as well as abroad. How do you find the enthusiasm in Calcutta? Everybody says it's, it's yeah. something remarkable. Yeah. Calcutta, strangely, I have had the, the um, opportunity to present the last two films of mine in Calcutta, one after the other. First was uh, Elipatayam, and then um, three years back it was uh, Madhuligal, 
and this time with AN. So, and of course the Calcuttans have been very enthusiastic always um, about the films being uh, screened here. There is a lot of enthusiasm and uh, that is very encouraging in fact. In Calcutta you always have a very enthusiastic audience. That is the, the plus point about this city in spite of all other small problems. Uh, problems about cinema houses, films um, not being really uh, properly projected, their contribution to the prints by way of uh, scratches and all that. So that way probably the facilities are not good or the people who handle them in the cinema houses, they don't care. All that is compensated when you see the long queues before the cinema houses and the undying enthusiasm of the people clamoring for seats inside. That's a wonderful thing. And finally, finally, what do you think is, this, how do you sort of compare the state of Indian cinema, particularly parallel, in comparison to all the foreign films that you are seeing? How is Indian cinema doing? No, see, this is, uh, yes, this is a time when uh, one can see it um, in the perspective of the world cinema. I think we have to improve a lot, not only in terms of filmmaking, you know, even in, in, the, in the matter of film projection, you know. Uh, a print, an Indian film for instance, my film for instance, which was uh, being screened I, in, in the panorama section. In fact, I had at every stage supervised the making, the making of the print, then subtitling of the print, and I was so happy I made a very good print. Here I come and one day before my arrival, the print had a projection in, a, in, in a one, one of the cinema houses, I think Madhusudan Manch or somewhere. And uh, I was expecting the good print before the audiences to be pro um, projected. And I find the whole print from beginning to end with scratches. And the operator playing the role of the sound mixer because when he, when he sees a car or jeep coming, he raises the volume and leaves it at that. So I thought uh, in, in terms of uh, projection of our, our own Indian films, there is something missing. We don't take enough care to project our films to the others, to the visitors who come to select films or their festivals and all that. That part is unfortunately lacking. Quality-wise, oh, quality uh, well, well no, we, we don't lack quality-wise. I don't think we lack. But then there is always uh, room for improvement because um, our life is very different from the West. Our outlook is very different from the West. So there is no meaning in comparing the values and the treatment you know, uh, that we adopt in our films. Technique-wise, we are not behind, I don't think. We, we have been uh, making excellent films in terms of technique, but in terms of approach and in terms of acceptability in the West, you know, you know we should not worry. But, uh, do you think Indian cinema is evolving an Indian character? Do you think that is happening at least? Definitely, definitely. When the film is truthful to the life it portrays, it will, de it will develop its own character because it, is, it has to be very particular, very specific, culture specific, I would say, in terms of uh, treatment. Uh, yeah, because it's not just the technique. Technique is to tell what you, what you have to say. So technique will vary according to the theme, according to what you want to, according to your own perceptions about the world you want to, that you want to portray. So technique is not the whole thing. Technique should be there, of course, unless you know how to get it across, the ideas that you have to an audience, unless you know the, the medium well, unless uh, you are a master of the medium, you cannot really convey an idea effectively to an audience, whether they are an international audience or a national or a